The Telangana police had three significant data breaches in one week. This is important. I have never been more certain you care. So like, don't skip it. On May 29th, the Telangana police's community policing mobile application, Hawkeye, was reported to have suffered a data breach. Board says that 1.3 lakh emergency records, 70,000 incident reports, 20,000 travel detail records, and even location coordinates were posted on a data leak forum called Breach Forums. Then, on the 7th of June, the SMS service of the Telangana police, largely used to send SMS updates, awareness messages, and so on, was also reportedly breached. Important notices, police alerts, and personal data and contact information of police officers was exposed in this breach. On the same day, an app called TSCOP, which uses an integrated facial recognition system to provide the access to police officers to criminal databases and match images of people taken during patrols, was hacked. Offender records, police gun licenses, officer names, pictures, designations, and police station affiliations were exposed in this breach. All three of the breaches were carried out by the same threat actor, reportedly a 20-year-old student from Greater Noida region who was being contacted by potential buyers of the data by the alias admin friend. The Times of India report about the Hawkeye breach narrates the story of dangers of such a breach. The Hawkeye data breach exposed the name, mobile number, location of a woman along with the date and time of her complaint with the police against a man who had promised to marry her and now was threatening her and her family. This leak was in the sample of the data leaked from the app posted by the threat actor. I'd like to emphasize that this is a sample of the data exposed. The SMS service breach has its own unique risks. Exposed contact information of police officers and a state-level database of phone numbers can be abused for pulling scams where hackers can pose as police officers and send targeted SMSs to unsuspecting citizens like you and me. The most concerning sets of data leaked were from the TS Cop app because this is where sensitive personal data is on the line. The Internet Freedom Foundation has consistently voiced various privacy and surveillance concerns associated with facial recognition technology. I know that because I made one of the videos where they expressed concerns about collecting such sensitive personal data and its cyber security when we talked about Digi Yatra. IFF also reiterated their call to ban the scan when they published this explainer on the massive breach on the Tamil Nadu police's facial recognition portal. The TS Cop was integrated with FRS enabling police officers to generate facial recognition reports and match them in real time. This is possible only because the system already stores facial data of suspects and criminals in massive volumes. It doesn't end there. The news laundry report on these breaches by Srinivas Kodali says that TSCOP app has embedded in plain text the passwords for all application pr programming interfaces which has also been exposed in the breach. As it stands today, the use of FRT or surveillance systems generally are not regulated by any law in India. There are no standards, guidelines, circulars, policy documents or office memorandum in the public domain to regulate the technology or certify its quality or accuracy. If you heard the doorbell ring at this moment, I believe it's your cue to let that sink in. There is no publicly available disclosure, no law, guideline or anything we know of that regulates FRT. The Digital Personal Data Protection Act 2023 does not provide any safeguards here either. In fact, it worsens the situation to an extent as it allows the processing of personal data for any purpose that is not expressly forbidden by law. But none of this is stopping police forces from deploying these surveillance tools. For example, TSCOP operates on the Ministry of Home Affairs Crime and Criminal Tracking Networking Systems which is a central network connecting the police stations across the country to increase the ease of access for all data related to FIRs, investigations, charge sheets, and so on. CCTNS is further linked to the National Intelligence Grid, or the NAT Grid, and the National Automated Facial Recognition System. Again, all of this infrastructure is without the presence of an active data protection law. Remember that even the Digital Personal Data Protection Act was introduced and passed in the parliament only in 2023. This incident promoted independent parallel investigations into the TSCOP breach. These investigations have also prompted even more serious questions on the Telangana police's data collection and sharing practices. There are now allegations that the Telangana police has been collecting details of every guest that checks into a hotel in Hyderabad and then these details are shared with other hotels to track and profile their guests. 
I think it's worth mentioning that the Sarayas Act 1867 allows police across the country to access hotel guest logs, including names, addresses and contacts, with the objective of regulating such establishments and ensuring the safety of travellers. State and local police forces, on paper and in limited contexts, reserve the right to inspect these criminal records to ensure compliance. Highlight of the sentence being limited context. It is slightly Black Mirror episode that hotel logs are being shared with police and other hotels because the police may be misusing its powers under this act for entirely different surveillance purposes. Company domain Zebi Chain seems to be mentioned in TS Corp's apps code, with which data is allegedly shared with other hotels to effectively track or profile their guests. Telangana police has explicitly denied sharing any hotel guest data on the TS Corp app and sharing it on the US third party application. But if you look at the 15 minutes 24 seconds timestamp on this now unlisted video, the Telangana police seems to be presenting a new feature of the TS Corp app. Similarly, we have integrated with uh, large and uh, hotels visitor uh, verification. So, this is this has been implemented in three districts right now karimnagar uh, saibrabad and uh, surapet i think so uh, all the visitors who ever uh, visit the lodge or uh, uh, hotel so there uh, they will enter the details so automatically we will uh, we will get the notification with the photo and mobile number and address all those th details we have a dedicated database here. though this was seemingly announced as a pilot project in 2021, its present status is currently unknown. IFF has filed an RTI request application to find out and inquire about this privacy violation. Another allegation is that TS Corp may be seeding personal data such as occupation, contact information and gas connection number along with house address details from Telangana's welfare distribution scheme Samagra Vedika as references to these details were found in TS Corp app code as well. TS Corp is not a citizen-facing app, so these details could not have been provided by users or beneficiaries themselves. And I would like to know where is this welfare benefits related data getting in the database? As of 12th June 2024, the TS Corp website is temporarily closed and Android app is also down. This is an extremely boring picture of India's cybersecurity landscape. IFF has been monitoring and maintaining a non-exhaustive list of data breaches in the country since 2020, and it shows a surge of them in the past year. You can check this list at plugthebreach.in for yourself. Despite the efforts to bolster cybersecurity measures, including establishing dedicated agencies and initiatives, challenges such as insufficient resources, outdated infrastructure, and a shortage of skilled professionals persist. IFF is also writing to the Telangana police about these concerns in detail. As for me, I have filed an RTI application requesting documents from the Telangana police regarding their adherence to the security guidelines in the guidelines for the Indian government websites and apps 3.0 by the National Informatics Centre in an attempt to understand what kind of cyber security checks do these websites go through currently. If you want to help, please share this video. Spread awareness about the state of our cyber security measures and how much risk it puts you in. Your police complaints, contact information, addresses and your facial recognition data could be used to profile you and in the wrong hands makes you vulnerable to the cyber security frauds. And donate to the Internet Freedom Foundation so they can keep publishing about these surveillance infrastructures and voice concerns about creating policies to protect your interest and your right to privacy.